This is the Music History Today podcast for September 22nd. On today's show, the first Farm Aid concert takes place, John Lennon signs his last record deal, and Happy Birthday becomes part of the public domain. First up, though, on this date in 1962, Bob Dylan performed at Carnegie Hall in New York City. In 1965, the Supremes recorded the song I Hear a Symphony. In 1969, the TV music show Music Scene premiered on ABC television. In 1979, Joe Walsh of the Eagles announced that he was running for president. Clearly, he did not win. In 1980, John Lennon and Yoko Ono signed what would turn out to be their last record deal. It was with Geffen Records, which also formed on this day in 1980. In 1983, the Everly Brothers performed together for the first time in 10 years. In 1985, the first Farm Aid Benefit concert was held. John Mellencamp, Willie Nelson, and Neil Young organized the event, and we discuss this event more in-depth on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this network or this channel, depending on how you're watching this or listening to this. Please like, subscribe, and do all that stuff that the algorithm tells you to. Meanwhile, in 1992, Bruce Springsteen performed his MTV Unplugged concert, although he was plugged in for all but one song. In 1992, same day, American Vice President Dan Quayle continued the war on rap music by politicians, this time saying that Tupac's album, Tupacalypse Now, quote, has no place in society, end quote because the song Soldier's Boy had a line about, quote, dropping a cop, end quote. Quayle also told record stores that they should stop selling the album, just in case you thought censorship and cancel culture was a new thing. Like I always say, things been going around for decades. In 1998, the group White Zombie broke up. Also in 1998, the Family Values Rap Rock Festival Tour started. Ramstein, Korn, Ice Cube, and Limp Bizkit were the bands on that tour. In 2000, Liam Gallagher of Oasis divorced actress Patsy Kensett. In 2003, American Idol showed the audition tape of William Hung singing Ricky Martin's song She Bangs. Hung's really bad rendition suddenly made him a star for his 15 minutes of fame. In 2009, LL Cool J's TV show NCIS LA premiered. In 2012, the Farm Aid 7 charity concert took place. In 2015, the song Happy Birthday became part of the public domain, which means that you can now put the song online without having to worry about someone flagging a claim to it. Supposedly. I'm sure some lawyers found a way around that one. And in 2018, the Farm Aid 33 charity concert took place, and on that same day, Paul Simon finished what he said was his final tour. We'll see if that's the case. In classical music, in 1869, Richard Wagner premiered his opera Das Rheingold. And in 1961, composer Christoph Pederecki's piece, Threnody to the Victims of Hiroshima, premiered. In theater in 1921, the Music Box Theater, which was built for Irving Berlin's Music Box Review, opened. In 1964, the musical Fiddler on the Roof opened on Broadway. And in 1973, the Broadway show A Little Night Music opened. In award ceremonies that were held on September 22nd, in 1999, Shania Twain, Tim McGraw, and Martina McBride were the big winners at the Country Music Association Awards. In 2002, Sting received an Emmy Award for the documentary Sting in Tuscany All This Time. And in 2018, Rihanna was named as a Bahamian ambassador. Albums that were released on September 22nd include in 1969 when the band released their self-titled album. In 1975, George Harrison released Extra Texture, Read All About It. Also, Smokey released Changing All the Time. In 1978, Funkadelic released One Nation Under a Groove. The Buzzcocks released Love Bites. Camel released Breathless, Jethro Tull released Bursting Out, Jethro Tull Live, and the Ramones released Road to Ruin. 
In 1981, King Crimson released Discipline. In 1986, Alice Cooper released Constrictor. In 1987, Ice House released Man of Colors. In 1988, Lyle Lovett released Step Inside This House. In 1989, Robbie Krieger of The Doors released Door Jams. Also on that same day, Bob Dylan released Oh Mercy. In 1990, the Two Live Crew released Two Live Crew Live in Concert. In 1992, Extreme released Three Sides to Every Story and Roy Buchanan released Sweet Dreams, the Anthology. In 1993, The Happy Mondays released Double Easy, the U.S. Singles. In 1997, Elton John released The Big Picture. In 1998, The Goo Goo Dolls released Dizzy Up the Girl. Mel and Colin released Same Old Tunes. Chris Isaac released Speak of the Devil. And Kiss released Psycho Circus. In 2003, Scylla Black released Beginnings, Greatest Hits, and New Songs. In 2008, David Gilmore released Live in Gdansk. In 2009, Pearl Jam released Backspacer. Stephen Stills and Manassas released Manassas Pieces. And the compilation album Where the Action Is, Los Angeles Nuggets, 1965 to 1968, was released. In 2014, Leonard Cohen released Popular Problems, and in 2018, Nile Rodgers and Chic released It's About Time. Singles that were released in the UK on September 22nd include in 1967 when the Hollies released King Midas in Reverse, Brenda Holloway released You've Made Me So Very Happy, and The Association released Never My Love with the Moody Blues releasing Love and Beauty. And in 1980, the Rolling Stones released She's So Cold. Meanwhile, in America, in 1954, Elvis Presley released Good Rockin' Tonight. In 1964, Elvis Presley did a twofer. He released Ask Me and Ain't That Loving You Baby. In 1965, The Miracles released My Girl Has Gone. In 1967, Procol Harum released Holmberg. In 1972, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show released Carry Me Carry, and Albert Hammond released It Never Rains in Southern California. In 1973, Elvis Presley was back at it, releasing a twofer again. This time, it was For Old Time's Sake and Raised on Rock. In 1975, the Isley Brothers released For the Love of You, Parts 1 and 2. In 1996, The Wallflowers released The Difference. In 1997, The Rolling Stones released Anybody See My Baby. In 1998, Madonna released The Power of Goodbye and The Bare Naked Ladies released One Week. And in 2011, Rihanna and Calvin Harris released We Found Love. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 22nd include singer Joan Jett of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, The Runaways, and of solo fame. Singer-songwriter Nick Cave, singer-actress and director Billy Piper, rapper Moneybag Yo, singer Taeyeon of Twice, Singer Shun Min of Stray Kids, Park Jin Young of Got7, Jack Jones of SM6, Mark Torian of The Bullet Boys, singer Debbie Boone, singer-choreographer Tony Basil, opera singer Andrea Bocelli, Pete Jones of Public Image Limited, rapper Mystical, Watch Yourself, Rapper King Issa, singer Joni James, Gary Holton of the Heavy Metal Kids, Doug Wimbish of Living Color, Matt Sharp of Weezer, Jonette Napolitano of Concrete Blonde, Richard Fairbrass of Right Said Fred, David Coverdale of Whitesnake, Kofi Burbridge of the Tedeschi Trucks Band, composer George Gruber, jazz singer Marlena Shaw, musician King Sunny Day. Saxophonist Tony DeGrady, singer-actress and the daughter of Harry Belafonte, 
Sherry Belafonte. Jazz saxophonist Ken Vandermark, singer and guitarist Andy Cairns of the group Therapy, rapper Rod Digga, singer Chesney Hawks, singer Big Rube of Society of Soul, and also the group The Dungeon Family. Composer and clarinetist Bill Smith, jazz trumpet player Ray Wetzel, pianist Rio de Gregori, and session pianist Fletcher Smith. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 22nd include composer Jose Solana, who passed away in 1712 at the age of 69. Composer Francesco Mancini passed away in 1737 at the age of 65. Composer who I already mentioned, George Gruber, passed away on his birthday, actually, his 67th birthday in the year 1796. Composer Carl Schroeder passed away in 1935 at the age of 86. Composer Joseph Hauer passed away in 1959 at the age of 76. Composer Franz Salmhofer passed away in 1975 at the age of 75. Composer Harry Warren passed away in 1981 at the age of 88. Composer Louis Kentner passed away in 1987 at the age of 82. Composer Irving Berlin passed away in 1989 at the age of 101. Trumpet player Teddy Buckner passed away in 1994 at the age of 85. Jazz musician Leonard Feather passed away in 1994 at the age of 80. Gospel music singer Maddie Clark passed away in 1994 at the age of 69. Composer Dolly Ann Collins passed away in 1995 at the age of 62. Singer and actress extraordinaire Miss Dorothy L'Amour passed away in 1996 at the age of 81. Violinist Isaac Stern passed away in 2001 at the age of 81. Big band vocalist Connie Haynes passed away in 2008 at the age of 87. Singer Eddie Fisher passed away in 2010 at the age of 82. Singer Vesta Williams passed away from heart issues in 2011 at the age of 53. Chaz Hodges of the group Chaz and Dave passed away in 2018 at the age of 74. Bassist Bob Moore passed away in 2021 at the age of 88. The drummer and co-founder of the Doobie Brothers, John Hartman, passed away in 2022 at the age of 72. And country and bluegrass singer-songwriter Mike Henderson of the group The Blue Bloods and also the group The Steel Drivers passed away in 2023 at the age of 70. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 23rd, when in 1980, Bob Marley performed on stage for the final time. <laughs> 